I don't know about you guys, but Razer is quickly becoming my favorite gaming brand of 2019. It seems like they're listening, releasing products that are actually innovative at competitive price points too. It really started with the lightweight Razer Viper mouse that pretty much everyone in the FPS space loved. Then came the Huntsman TE, a TKL keyboard with insanely fast Razer's own optical switches, PBT keycaps, a standard bottom row, and a Type-C connection. Literally a perfect gaming keyboard. I've also received the Siren Emote microphone, and this one isn't for everyone, but the built-in 8-bit screen is actually very cool and complements the whole streaming interaction if you're into that. And then came the Razer Viper Ultimate, a wireless Viper mouse with a charging dock, awesome battery life, still a lightweight design, and excellent sensor performance. I've been using it since its arrival, and finally we have something to compete against G Pro Wireless, the Viper Ultimate is a strong contender in the wireless space. And now we have this, an update to their gamepad products. This is the Tartarus Pro. It's got the exact same shape as the Tartarus V2, but with new analog optical switches with adjustable actuation points and this new awesome looking mercury white color too. The Be Quiet Pure Base 500 is a perfectly sized handsome mid tower with the usual silent properties on the front panel and foam on the interior with two quality fans included, plus a modular top section to expand the cooling potential. Give you hardware in your home with the Pure Base 500. All right, so let's get the basics out of the way as the shape and the design really hasn't changed from the previous V2. Unfortunately, the price has gone up to $129 versus $79 for the Tartarus V2. So you have 20 main analog optical switches, a scroll wheel that still doesn't have good scroll steps and it's kind of awkward to reach with your point finger. The space part though is perfectly placed under the thumb and now with better switches, uh, it makes a huge difference. We still have the same D-pad joystick with a removable tip. This way you are less likely to accidentally press it. And finally, a profile switcher with three LEDs and up to eight profiles, none of which are unfortunately saved on the gamepad itself and will not run outside of your default traditional layout uh, unless Synapse 3 is installed and running. And this thing is recognized through the software. So that is one unfortunate thing. There is no built-in memory. The wrist rest is the same rubberized material with some padding in the bottom with dual positions for extra ergonomics. So when it's extended, your hand is flatter and it's easier to reach the space bar. So it's good for large hands. Or if you prefer a more claw type shape for smaller hands, the default position is good for that. As I mentioned in my original V2 video, these game pads are fantastic space savers and much more comfortable versus your regular keyboards because you can place the pro closer to the body at the comfortable angle. It also complements notebook gamers so you're not suffering through two millimeters or less of travel distance on the notebook. And of course, these are incredible for macros, both in gaming and productivity. And what makes the Pro so special are the new analog optical switches. So they're linear and very smooth and have four millimeters of travel distance and dual actuation points, primary and secondary, and you can adjust either to register between 1.5 millimeters and 3.6. And this is pretty unique for two reasons. First, the second actuation point can have a secondary function or a macro, but it is only activated when you pass that actuation point. For example, the primary function can be W, while the second function at 3.6 millimeters can be shift plus W, allowing you to walk in CSGO by using the same key. If you set the secondary function to be the same as primary, you get fast double taps, and there are plenty of options to choose from, although you cannot record mouse clicks to be your secondary function. The difficulty here would be training your fingertips and how much pressure you apply to either hit the primary actuation point or the secondary actuation point. And to be honest, the two millimeter difference is not that significant to notice or to feel in the heat of the battle. And you have to focus on your fingertips and how much pressure you apply. Uh, and that is one of those elements that you have to train for and be prepared for in order to use this functionality properly. It also feels like the secondary actuation point happens earlier than 3.6 millimeters. As you can see, I've marked 3.6 millimeters on the keycap and the shift in W is registered before I pass that point. I feel like it would have been much better to have the secondary actuation point happen when you fully bottom out. This way you have a bit more control on when the primary happens depending on when the actuation uh, set, but then the secondary to always happen when you fully bottom out. I feel like this way you'd have more control or even expand that secondary actuation range to be even lower uh, to the bottoming out because at 3.6, I feel like there's uh, quite a bit more travel distance before the switch bottoms out. 
uh, while it's already activated at 3.6. And the second unique function behind these switches is analog input, so basically treating all of these switches as joystick movements. So depending on how far down you press, the faster or slower your character moves, and you can adjust analog sensitivity. I do like the slow preset to give me finer control at the very top of key travel, but this again requires quite a bit of finger training to get right. And after all that, I feel like the Tartarus Pro is just like an overkill macro station, because not only do we have eight profiles and even Razer Hyper Shift that adds one more layer of macros on top of that, we also have those secondary functionality via the actuation distance. Even if you are not interested in using all these macro tools, at least I'm happy we have better switches that are linear and in my opinion, better suited for gaming than the mecha membrane switches found on the V2. But why did they have to pull a razor? Because at $129, that price is expensive. It's competing directly against their latest TKL keyboard, the Huntsman TE, which is fantastic and sure doesn't have analog switches or that much macro customization like this thing does. It's almost like if you're not utilizing all these macro commands and analog switches and dual actuation points, then this thing is going to be left underutilized and perhaps not as popular as it should be. It brings great promise to the macro lens, but it's terrible value at $129. And if you're not using it, it's hard to recommend at this price. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out other relevant content over here. Make sure to check out all the links in the description below for awesome products. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you in the next video.